Let's take a look at the fighter that has been asked to do it all, the F-35. The Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II is a fifth generation, single engine, single seat, multi-role stealth fighter which is tasked with performing a variety of missions, including strike, air superiority, surveillance, reconnaissance, and electronic warfare. Having been called the most lethal, survivable, and connected fighter aircraft in the world, the F-35 is intended to operate until 2070. Lockheed Martin is the primary contractor, along with principal partners BAE Systems and Northrop Grumman. The F-35 is an international fighter, with partner nations that include Norway, Australia, Denmark, Canada, and the Netherlands. The F-35 is actually a family of aircraft that is produced in three main variants. The CTOL or conventional takeoff and landing F-35A, the Stovall or short takeoff and vertical landing F-35B, and the CV Catobar or catapult assisted takeoff but arrested recovery F-35C. Let's start by taking a look at the specifications for the F-35A. Length 51.4 feet Height 14.4 feet Wingspan 35 feet Maximum speed Mach 1.6 at altitude or 700 knots at sea level Empty weight 29,300 pounds Maximum takeoff weight 70,000 pounds Range, 669 nautical miles on internal fuel, 760 nautical miles for an interdiction mission on internal fuel or for internal air-to-air -air configuration. Thrust to weight ratio, 0.87 at gross weight or 1.07 at loaded weight with 50% internal fuel. Engine thrust class. 1. Pratt & Whitney F-135 PW100 Afterburning Turbofan 28,000 pounds of thrust dry or 43,000 pounds of thrust with afterburner The F-35A is armed with the internal GAU-22A 25mm 4-barrel rotary cannon with 180 rounds of ammunition. The F-35B and C models can take an external pod with the same cannon and 220 rounds. Additionally, the F-35 has four internal stations in two weapons bays which are used to maintain its stealth profile, and six external hardpoints, three under each wing, that can be used for non-stealth missions. The internal stations can carry up to 5,700 pounds, while the external stations can hold up to 15,000 pounds. Total weapons payload capacity is 18,000 pounds. The F-35 can carry a diverse range of weapons, including for air-to-air -air missions, heat-seeking AIM-9X Sidewinders or AIM-132 ASRAM missiles, radar-guided AIM-120 AMRAMs or MDBA Meteor missiles, for air-to-ground missions, AGM-154 Joint Standoff Weapons or JSOWs, Paveway Laser-Guided Bombs, Mark 20 Rock Eye Cluster Bombs Mark 77 Incendiary Cluster Bombs The AGM-158 Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile The AGM-88 Harm Anti-Radar Missile For Anti-Ship Operations The AGM-158C Long Range Anti-Ship Missile or LRSAM And hopefully one that never gets used the B-61 Thermonuclear Gravity Bomb. This list is by no means inclusive as there are several future payload options being developed for the F-35. The F-35 is equipped with the AN-APG-81, an Actively Electronically Scanned Array or AESA radar. An evolution of the F-22's AN-APG-77 radar the APG-81 radar includes the air-to-air -air modes found on the F-22 along with advanced air-to-ground modes that utilize high-resolution mapping, the ability to track multiple ground-moving targets, and electronic warfare capabilities. 
In a real-life flight test, 23 targets were within 100 miles of an F-35. In less than 3 seconds, 19 were automatically detected and tracked, with all 23 targets detected and tracked in less than 9 seconds. The radar continued to track these targets while continuing to search for new targets. Additionally, air-to-air -air and air-to-ground modes can be run simultaneously on the F-35's large cockpit display. These abilities offer first look, first shot, and first kill capability to the F-35. It is not difficult to see why the APG-81 has been called the world's most advanced fire control radar found on a fighter. The F-35 also makes use of the only 360-degree spherical situational awareness system. Known as Distributed Aperture System or DAS, it consists of six infrared cameras mounted around the aircraft, which send HD real-time imagery directly to the pilot's helmet. This allows the pilot to fully see the environment around them in day or night conditions with no loss of clarity or quality. Among other features, DAS provides detection and tracking of missiles, fire control, tracking of friendly aircraft to enhance tactical maneuvering and navigation assistance for both day and night modes. Furthermore, DAS integrates with other aircraft sensors, meaning that if the radar detects objects of interest, the DAS algorithms analyze them and recommends to the pilot in which order to deal with the threats, essentially providing data fusion. Additionally, the F-35 can make use of the world's first and only sensor platform, which provides forward-looking infrared or FLIR and infrared search and track or IRST functionality, which is known as an Electrical Optical Targeting System or EOTS. Other aircraft make use of EOTS systems, but the F-35s is integrated into a combined unit. This lightweight system further enhances the pilot's situational awareness and is housed in a stealthy low-drag housing with a sapphire window. The EOTS integrates via high-speed fiber optic interface into the aircraft's integrated central computer. Unlike other fighters, the F-35 does not have a heads-up display or HUD. Instead, the F-35's pilots make use of a helmet-mounted display system or HMDS to view flight and combat data at all times. The HMDS also receives image data from the DAS and allows the pilot to effectively see through the aircraft. Additionally, the helmet allows for high angles of boresight target locking, meaning that the pilot can lock on a target and fire a missile at another aircraft that is not oriented towards the F-35's nose. The main display in the F-35's cockpit is a 20 by 8 inch panoramic touchscreen that among other things displays instrument, navigation, and combat data. The display allows the pilot to customize the information to meet the pilot's needs. Additionally, there is also a smaller backup display and speech recognition algorithms are implemented to further enhance the pilot interface. All of these systems combine to provide sensor fusion, which creates an integrated view of the battlefield. This provides the F-35 with unprecedented situational awareness and can be distributed to other land, sea, and air assets via secure data links such as the Multifunction Advanced Data Link or MADL, making the F-35 a force multiplier on the modern battlefield. Along with advanced avionics and sensor fusion, stealth is another key feature of the F-35. The airframe was designed in shape to reduce the radar cross-section or RCS. This was done by aligning edges, making use of serrated skin panels, and masking the engine face. Furthermore, the F-35 has a Divertless Supersonic Inlet or DSI, which uses a forward swept cowl and compression bump to divert the boundary layer away from the engine duct. Additionally, the F-35 makes use of radar absorbent materials or RAM. The F-35 applied lessons learned from previous stealth applications such as the F-22, and as a result, the F-35 skin is more durable and requires less maintenance than older top coats. At certain angles and frequencies, the F-35's RCS is lower than a metal golf ball and compares favorably to the F-22. Additionally, the F-35's radio frequency emitters also employ rigorous controls to minimize or prevent their detection. The F-35 is the product of the Joint Strike Fighter or JSF program which itself is actually a merger of several programs including the Common Affordable Lightweight Fighter and the Supersonic Stolvol Fighter or SSF. 
Following the end of the Cold War and reduced defense budgets, both the Navy's advanced fighter attack and the Air Force's multi-role fighter programs were canceled. Additionally, the Navy also canceled the A-12 Avenger II, which was to be a replacement for the A-6 in 1991 due to cost overruns. At the same time, the Naval Advanced Tactical Fighter Program, which was to be a replacement for the F-14, was also canceled. This led to the formation of the Joint Advanced Strike Technology, or JAST, program in 1993. By 1995, with the inclusion of Stolval requirements, the program was renamed Joint Strike Fighter, or JSF. The goal of the JSF was an ambitious one. Replace the Harrier, A-10, F-16, F-A-18, and F-117 with a single family of fighters. To handle such an undertaking, international cooperation was needed from the start. The United Kingdom joined as a founding member of the JSF in 1995 and became a Tier 1 partner. Following a concept demonstration phase, or CDP, Italy and the Netherlands joined as Tier 2 partners, and Canada, Denmark, Norway, Austria, and Turkey joined as Tier 3 partners. Because of the international participation, the F-35 was intended for export from day one, unlike the F-22, which cannot be exported. In 1997, as part of the concept development phase, Lockheed Martin and Boeing were selected as final competitors. Boeing's concept demonstrator was designated as the X-32, while the Lockheed demonstrator was designated the X-35. British Aerospace and Northrop Grumman joined the Lockheed team, and the competition was on. Each team was to produce two flying examples, one for conventional takeoff and landing with carrier capabilities, and the other for Stolvol. The Lockheed X-35 Stolvol entrant utilized a system that connected a drive shaft to the turbines, which turned a lift fan that essentially operates like a helicopter's main rotor. This approach was seen as an evolution of previous examples with dedicated engines to provide vertical lift in aircraft such as the Convair Model 200 and the Yakovlev Yak-141. The dedicated engines basically became dead weight in level flight, and by instead using a lift fan, weight was reduced and less maintenance was required. In contrast, the Boeing X-32 Stovall entrant used a directed lift system which reconfigured the turbofan to engage in Stovall operations. And while the directed lift system has been used in aircraft like the Harrier, it was not as efficient as the X-35's lift fan. In October of 2000, the X-35A first flew. After performing 28 flights where both subsonic and supersonic performance was evaluated, the airframe was converted to the Stovall version, which was designated the X-35B. The conversion of the airframe was due to the fact that only two prototypes could be flown, and the second airframe was reserved to test the carrier variant, which had a longer wingspan and was designated the X-35C. This conversion also served to demonstrate the commonality between the three designs. By October of 2001, Lockheed Martin was declared the winner and the X-32 faded into history. A distinctive looking airplane, the X-32 did offer some advantages, but the X-35 was deemed the better aircraft. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on the X-32. Getting back to the results of the competition, although the prototype was designated X-35, the official designation was going to be F-24. However, it is alleged that the program manager, Major General Mike Hoff, announced the designation F-35 and the name stuck. Apparently, even Lockheed Martin was surprised. Let me know in the comments if you have any insider information on this. Taking the X-35 family and turning them into production fighters proved to be more complicated and costly than anyone imagined. One of the early challenges came from adding all the aircraft systems that the F-35 relies on. Ultimately, the weight adjustments for the three airframes delay the project by some 18 months and cost an estimated $6 billion. By 2006, in Fort Worth, Texas, the first F-35A, which was designated AA-1, was rolled out and eventually flown. The name Lightning II was also given in 2006, the original Lightning being the World War II era Lockheed P-38. Another challenge was developing and deploying the software for the F-35. For initial production, the F-35 software and hardware upgrades would be released in batches known as blocks, with an initial plan for six releases. The first two blocks, 1A and 1B, 
were designed for pilot training, with Block 2A being used for additional training upgrades. Block 2B was released as the first combat ready version for the Marines. Block 3I was the release for the Air Force, and the final release known as Block 3F has all the software required for full warfighting capability. Currently, the Block 4 upgrade is being worked on which includes additions of new weapon options and enhancements to the pilot interface, including the pilot's ability to see behind them without having to turn their head. Just like airframe developments took longer than anticipated, the software development effort suffered from large delays and cost overruns. An ambitious effort in scope, the F-35's code is over 8 million lines and includes many groundbreaking features. However, this did come at a price. The initial project was estimated to cost $200 billion in 2002 dollars. That estimate has been revised to $406 billion dollars and $1.1 trillion dollars that would be needed for operations and maintenance through 2070, essentially costing $1.5 trillion dollars over the life of the program. Still, as more units are produced and problems are resolved, the unit cost of a single F-35 goes down. For example, the F-35A now costs about $78 million. The F-35B costs about $101 million, and the F-35C costs about $95 million. In 2015, the F-35B entered service with the Marine Corps, and in 2016, the F-35A entered service with the U.S. Air Force. The Navy's F-35C entered service in 2019. The United States is the primary operator of the F-35, with the Air Force planning to operate over 1,700 F-35As. The Navy is planning to operate over 270 F-35Cs, and the Marines are planning for over 300 F-35Bs and 67 F-35Cs. The United Kingdom has plans to operate 138 total F-35s, which will consist of F-35Bs and Cs for the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force. Italy is planning for 60 F-35As and 30 F-35Bs. The Netherlands plans for 46 F-35As. Australia plans for 100 F-35As. Norway is planning for 52 F-35As. Denmark plans for 27 F-35As. Canada has indicated the need for 88 new fighters, possibly F-35As. There's an open competition going on for that right now. Israel plans for 50 F-35As and redesignates them as F-35Is after local modifications are done to the avionics. Japan has plans for 100 F-35As and 42 F-35Bs. The Republic of Korea plans for 40 F-35As, while Belgium plans for 34 F-35As. Poland is looking to receive 32 F-35As. Although many details of the F-35's operational deployments are still classified, there are a couple of known examples that stand out. In 2018, during a test mission, consisting of at least three Israeli Air Force F-35Is, the aircraft flew from Tel Aviv to the Iranian capital of Tehran and back. The event was publicly unconfirmed. However, as a result of the mission, Iran's supreme leader reportedly fired the Air Force chief and commander of the Iran Revolutionary Guard. Also in 2018, Marine F-35Bs operating off the amphibious assault ship Essex conducted strikes on Taliban targets. The number of aircraft or type of munitions used were not disclosed, but the attack on a fixed Taliban position was considered a success. The F-35 certainly has had unprecedented cost overruns and has taken longer to bring into frontline service than anyone ever thought. However, the program did have some lofty goals and set out to not only be the best fifth generation air to everything platform, but also be made available to allies. Today, there have been over 550 F-35s delivered to nine nations, with more than 1,100 pilots trained and 9,400 maintainers. 
F-35 production employs more than 254,000 direct and indirect jobs in the U.S., in 48 states and Puerto Rico, with over 1,900 suppliers around the globe. Final assembly takes place in Fort Worth, Texas, Kameri, Italy, and Nagoya, Japan. What do you think? Is the F-35 the best fighter in the air today? Will it be a frontline fighter until 2070? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell for notifications. If you'd like to support this channel, consider Patreon or buying something from the merchandise store below. We also have a growing Discord community of like-minded aviation enthusiasts from around the world. The link is in the description below. Stay safe and see you next time.